Hey guys, it's Ruffles Kerman, and today we are going to be building a rover and landing it on a moon. But this isn't going to be any normal rover, this is going to be the ultimate mega rover. And I know Matt Lau and other people have made ultimate mega rovers before, but I wanted to do one myself and I wanted it to be an original design, so that's what I'm making here. Now I do like these giant wheels, but usually they're pretty hard to use because they don't turn at all, so your rover can't move very well. Now I got around this by adding a hinge in the middle of the rover, so it's sort of like a caterpillar or a snake and can wind its way around. It doesn't turn that much, but it does turn enough to make it usable and movable, maneuverable, that's the word, maneuverable. It does make it maneuverable, which is what I wanted. It also makes it look pretty cool and stand out, so I think that was a good design choice. I hope that was a good design choice. You will also notice I told you we're landing this on a moon. I did not say what moon. That part must remain a mystery until we land on the said moon, or at least you notice where we're going because we're flying in space and uh, we're around certain moons and not others. But anyway, you have to stick around and watch the video to find out. The hinge for the rover needed a good bit of testing because I wanted to make sure it would turn with the rover, so when I tried to turn the rover, the hinge would turn itself just like the normal rover wheels or other movable rover wheels would turn when you try to turn the rover. So I bound it to the correct action group, which I believe is yaw. Yes, it is yaw. I bound it to yaw and that worked pretty well. And then I just had to make sure it was going the right way and not reversed and I had to make sure that it was also moving the correct distance. Man, that was a great crash right there. Because if it moves too much, then the rover just sort of just flips or something. If it doesn't move enough, then you don't really need it at all. So there was a delicate balance that I had to find. Currently, we're just making this rover something more than a shell because I use the shell for testing, but this has to be the ultimate rover and an ultimate rover is not just an empty cargo bay. An ultimate rover has to look cool, right? So we're trying to make this look cool. And I say we, because I'm using a royal we, like, I just mean me. I mean, I think one of my brothers is watching at this point. Usually one of my brothers is watching. They give me some good advice. So I guess I can still say we. We were trying to make this rover look cool and be cool and actually do cool stuff instead of just being a blank rover because usually we have rovers that are really tiny and have some science on them and maybe a robotic scanning arm, but that's it. So I wanted to make this rover actually do something. So in this back, I'm making a special cargo bay for something that you actually won't get to see unless you watch the rest of the video. So make sure you watch the video and watch us land this on that unspecified mystery moon and then you'll get to see what goes in the back. You can put your guesses in the comments down below if you want. And then if your guess is wrong and you figure out it's wrong later, there's always an edit button so you can still be right anyway. So yeah, everybody gets to be right on YouTube. Yay! Alrighty, it is time for launch and this has nine of the whatever they're called, the normal engines you use from the expansion, the ones that are so overpowered, and then it has six mammoths as well. But as you can see, this is not enough thrust at all, this thrust weight is terrible, so we're gonna have to add some more boosters. More boosters is always the solution, and here we go, more boosters added, I think we just added 18 solid rocket boosters, and that is enough thrust to get off the ground, also makes it look pretty cool. That's probably more important than just having enough thrust, but I believe this has over 61,000 kilonewtons of thrust now. And if you know usually how much thrust your rockets have, this is a lot. The Mammoth engine has about 4,000 kilonewtons of thrust, and yeah, that's enough to get most everything off the ground, unless you're strats and blitz and you have to use like 50 of the Mammoth engines because you have like an 800 part rocket or something. But normally the Mammoth engines are enough, but this takes six Mammoth engines, nine of those engines that I forget their name, but you know, the normal ones, Wolfhound, maybe. And then it also takes 18 solid rocket boosters, I think the Thoroughbreds as well. So yeah, that's a lot of thrust. But now that we actually could get off the ground, we get to get into orbit with this giant rocket.
Okay, now your guess as to what moon we're landing on is limited to five. So much easier than before. We're not landing on Tylo. That's not a great idea unless you have an infinite amount of fuel um, or you're really smart. We're just using Tylo for gravity assist. And I actually have not done that before. So I didn't really know what I was doing, but it really was not that hard. All you had to do is use Tylo to sort of sling yourself more towards Jewel and then it got you into an easier orbit and then you know you didn't have to use as much fuel you didn't have to do as much work it was pretty easy and for some reason it somehow skipped looking at tylo so it didn't get to see our tylo encounter it just happened and then we ended up in an orbit around jewel which is nice i guess it's actually a really nice orbit but i sort of wanted to see tylo i don't know come on ksp in fact now that i'm thinking about it that really nice orbit almost seems too good to be true. That was a really low orbit for not doing any burn whatsoever and just using a gravity assist. I don't know, that might have been a glitch or something. But you did just get to see a preview of the moon we're landing on. So if you commented before and your comment was incorrect, go and edit it as quick as you can and you will have a 100% marks on your exam. Nice job. Okay, if you still don't know what moon this is, this is Val. I honestly don't know if you spelled it with one L or two Ls, but it is Val. You can Google how you spell it because I apparently am not a good substitute for Google. But our landing on Val, I will admit I had to reload a quick save at one point because I accidentally pressed spacebar and launched those side boosters off way too early. But our landing on Val actually went really smoothly and really well, as you can see right here. Alright, now it is time to play with this rover. This has a lot of functionality and a lot of cool things. I don't really know if there's a better way to say that. Yeah, cool things. First of all, it has Mickey Mouse ears. Um, I just like the solar panels. But second of all, here you get to see what's inside the back. This is actually a second rover. I had to make my own little ramp right there just so it works a little better and could drive back up. But this second rover is amazing and very stable and um, actually can do donuts. Don't try this at home, kids. Now let's go explore a rock. That's a very fun thing to do. But we did put a, a scanning arm on this, so exploring rock actually would get us some science. I don't know, exploring a rock just sounds very boring. If you want the craft file for this rocket, by the way, and this rover and the mini rover as well. I'll put the link in the description. That way you can fly this yourself and see how awesome it is. I had a lot of fun flying this rover, landing it, and then driving it around, as well as the small rover too. They're both pretty easy to drive around. The big rover, while not as maneuverable as the small one because it can't do donuts, does have that hinge in the middle, which makes it a lot more maneuverable than I think it otherwise would have been, which is really nice. And also means that if you land this rover on some place with more gravity, it'll work. Um, it'll still work really good because on less gravity, the reaction wheels can do a little bit of the turning. But if you have more gravity, you really do need that hinge. Like especially on Kerbin, you couldn't turn it. This big rover also has mining capabilities. It has a couple drills, it has an ISRU, and it has some 
solar panels and some of those heat radiator panels as well just to make sure it doesn't overheat so this thing could be self-sustaining if it had an engine which it doesn't but you could also use it as a refueling rover you could drive up to some other thing that has a um, one of those little grabber thingies or this also has an inflatable docking port on one side that you can extend in order to dock with something and then refuel it so this could be used as a refueling rover as well this rover really can do a lot of things. It's its own base, it has mining capabilities, it has a second rover inside it, it's more like a little hot rod rover. But let's talk about the big rover. Right now we're driving the big rover over to one of those ice volcanoes just to see how it drives. And it's very stable, it's pretty powerful, sometimes it has some trouble going up those steeper slopes. But it can get up those steeper slopes and, well first of all those red lights make the ice volcano look cool. But that hinge in the middle gives it some extra maneuverability that it wouldn't otherwise have had, making it a little bit easier to get up closer, close enough to that volcano in order to use that robotic scanning arm. Which by the way gave us like 700 science or something, which is a lot of science. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really encourage you to download this craft file. It is very, very fun to drive around, especially the little rover. If you like this video, please do leave a like and subscribe if you're not already and have a great rest of your day.